My guest for the morning, Ni Amasana Mwale, is a member of parliament for La Dade Kotopong. He's a member of the NDC and was a former uh, deputy minister of uh, fisheries. Agri. In charge of fisheries. In charge of fisheries. Yeah. And he's poised for another appointment. And he's poised for another appointment. Yeah, I beg well, The gentleman who gave me that filler is uh, Frank Anodompre. And he's a member of parliament for Insawama Dwejri. He's a member of the MPP as well. And thanks for joining me. And talking about the MPP, they've been in the news <coughs> uh, for the wrong reasons, though. But uh, it depends on how you're looking at it. Uh, it's, it's been a barrage of issues over the last three weeks. And, um, well, they've been discussed uh, cons conservat consecutively for uh, three weeks running on news file. And this will be the fourth week. <coughs> and I know it's tomorrow. <coughs> so uh, they had issues with uh, the death of their chairman in the Upper East region. And following that, a number of issues also cropped up. Now, just yesterday, a group of young men, uh, well, they gave the warning that they'll be going to the headquarters of um, the party, and indeed they went there. And the police, who were already there, had to beef up their, 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 their numbers there to make sure that there were no clashes. But ultimately, there were clashes, some skirmishes that led to the... Uh, the, the injuring of two young men and also some vandalizing of some <coughs> vehicles. Uh, we'll bring you some insights we have from there, from uh, the police PRO, uh, Sefa Satha, and then we'll continue with our discussions. And so if my director is ready with that very insight from the MPP, uh, any surrounding issues at the headquarters, we'll play that quickly, and uh, then we'll join the discussions. Okay, sorry. Uh, my director has not listened. Um, I wouldn't term it a clash as you called it. Uh, I would say that around 1, 1 30, some youth, numbering about 20, 30, uh, came here. You know, already we have some police presence here. And uh, they tried to enter the headquarters of the party and the police prevented them from entering. And so the police was able to disperse them. Uh, in, in brief, that is exactly what happened. And you know, the, there is also a security presence, apart from the police security, the party have their own security in the premises. And uh, as the youth were trying to enter, uh, they also came out with the intention of warding them off, but then the police was there, so the police managed to disperse the crowd and maintain law and order. Definitely, when incidents like this happen, the police need to investigate, so we shall do it. So the police will proceed to the Nima police station to conduct the investigation, to find out, so that it can facilitate our investigation. Vehicles belonging to the Ghana Police Service were seen patrolling the area around the party's headquarters. This was after the clash between the Invisible Forces and some youth who are said to be supporters of party chairman Paul Afoku had left two people injured. The youth, after retreating from the headquarters, vowed to forcibly remove the Invisible Forces if they failed to vacate the premises. That's, that's what if we will think now, want, if that's what they want. And we give them 24 hours. After 24 hours, anything can happen. And we are ready. We are, we are ready. We make quad. We lie, we make quad. See, we don't a joke. I will tell you something. I tell you something. We lie. We want them to leave the chairman and the secretary general to do their work because they were voted in the audit and picked they were voted by the delegates we came a lost complaint because we are capable of attacking them ourselves but to present to prevent all this we are coming to report to the police before we storm them the invisible forces have also indicated that they have no intentions of abandoning the headquarters Though they wouldn't speak on camera, one of their leaders tells me they will secure the building till a solution is found to the turmoil. As was the case on Tuesday, no journalist was allowed entry. The police, numbering about 50, wielded arms and were in protective gear, ready to curb further attacks. From the NPP headquarters here in Accra, Derek Ekosam for Joy News.
Mm. Of course, I'm here witnessed a lot of things yesterday. <coughs> and uh, what do you make of uh, all that's happening? Now, the police have to go lay siege at the frontal and also the premises of, of your headquarters. That's as serious as your issues can get. Well, um, good morning to your cherries viewers and listeners, and particularly my constituents in South Madrid. I'm very grateful. And uh, we extend warm regards, particularly to our party leadership, the general secretary and the chairman, the other leaders, and the rank and file of our party. Um, first of all, we thank God. God Almighty has been protective over this party, our flag bearer, uh, our national chairman, and the general secretary, even up to this day. Amidst all the happenings, the buhaha, I think that one thing that we all need to, to, to know is that uh, our flag bearer, Nanado, has demonstrated a good measure of leadership. Because if you recall, uh, ever since this matter dawned, especially when um, the former chairman had passed on, he had cut short all what was going on and um, had decided to come back into the country to, to lead the whole action to ensure that the man is given a defeating barrier and then all the matters that are relevant, it is resolved as it were. Um, what most people don't know is that this party is a very great party. And if you study the tradition of this party, um, we sojourn in opposition close to three decades. We never resorted to the barrel of the gun. We kept talking to Ghanaians and were given the mandate to rule in 2000. So what is happening, um, I condemn it. But it's a challenge that the party is capable of scaling over. It's not something that has not happened before. If you look at other parties, I mean, there are times that even general secretaries are being sacked from other parties. So it shouldn't be seen as, I hear my brother, uh, Deputy Minister of Education, say that the MPP is, uh, this forces at Nigeria is called Bukum Haram, can be likened to Bukum Haram. And I think that was the most unfair comment to make. If some individuals take the law into their hands and misconduct themselves, what is important is that we don't give political coloration to it. We deal with them as the law dictates. And I'm particularly happy the way the Ghana Police Service has conducted itself. I heard uh, Mr. Atta speak, and he said it wasn't exchanges. Some youth had wanted to take siege, and then they had brought sanity to the place. Um, today, the flag bearer is going to address the general public at the party rank and file. The former president has appealed for calm. I think gradually, gradually, even slowly, it's some level of calm is beginning to emerge. I will only appeal to our party faithfuls that this is a huge challenge for us. If we are not careful and this thing overtakes this party, gradually we are helping build a one-party state in our country, which is not too good for our do you think for politics. all the appeals um, <clears throat> you have made before even coming on this very platform, other personalities have made, top leadership of the party have made, do you think your rank and file have listened to it? Well, you know, you, you need to know what do they we all need to. We are, we are human beings, and you see, political party organization is a, is a mass group of people, and they act with a certain passion. It's like religious beliefs. Where there are religious exchanges, it's very, very difficult to just give one or two appeals and then uh, calm will, will, will be restored. It takes a while. What is important is that um, there's a certain guilt and a certain realization that has done our party rank and file particularly, that if we continue to go on these lane, the end result that we are all seeking to achieve is to ensure that we take the reins of government and bring welfare to the doorstep of our people will not be achieved. And that has done. I've been going around my constituency, and you can hear from our people the lamentations and the reservations they have about the whole buhaha. I am very happy about the calm in the face of all the extreme provocation that the two uh, leaders, the two big wigs, the general secretary and the, and the national chairman have shown. 
and particularly the flag bearer. They've all shown good leadership. I think our party rank and file, everybody should follow suit. Let them be calm. If you have a strong reason why you should resort to violence, you should know that violence, there has never been a time in our history, even in the world, where violence has been able to resolve any conflict. Whatever it is, we always have to sit and dialogue. Let me take this appeal uh, opportunity and make another appeal to our regional leaders, leadership, the constituency executives, so for everybody to remain calm. Today, the flag bearer is going to address the public and the media. Then from there, we all need to tow a certain lane and respect one another and understand that this party has rules and regulations and we are operating with the constitution. I hear people say that, well, all is lost. Now, it's a done deal for our brothers. Uh, in, in, the, in the NDC and all that. I heard a lot of big ways in the NDC make a certain argument that the NPP by extension is a violent party. You see, um, sometimes I don't blame them. But I, I think that we all need to be matured about the way we are going about this because let's not forget this thing can happen even to the NDC. Some measure of it has happened in the NDC before. I am quick to admit that Violence that has resulted in lives being lost is untoward, is unacceptable, and should be condemned. Yes, we have condemned it. But we all need to remember that we are all Ghanaians. Today is happening to MPP. The modus operandi, the way we describe the MPP, one day is happening to the NDC, and we are also describing the NDC as I, I don't know we whether you come to conclusions that they are taking advantage of, because, because on record, the General <coughs> Secretary have come out and, say, and said, that indeed what is happening is not an advantage for the party, but really uh, rather a dent in <coughs> the image and the democratic achievement of the country as a whole. And yes. they indeed sympathize with you as a party and would want uh, you as a party to take the reins and try to correct some of these Yes, elements. I heard him. I heard the General Secretary of the NDC, and I was particularly impressed with the maturity with which he spoke. Um, some of the NDC communicators, I know mm. my big brother, will not speak like this way some of these young and upcoming uh, politicians are speaking. For some of them, they think that the passion with which you speak, trying to paint a certain negative picture of your political uh, opponents is what projects you, not necessarily. I think that we have a challenge. We have shown a certain commitment, a certain, a certain disposition to Ghanaians that indeed we can resolve this conflict. And I believe that it's just a question of time and we'll get over it. It's mm. just a question of time they'll get over it. But the point is that the time, and I was mon monitoring uh, social media bef uh, this morning before I came to uh, sit on this very platform. Uh, the, the whole concern was the time that this should have been resolved, perhaps even the time that the press conference should have been convened by the flag <coughs> should have been about two weeks ago, or maybe let's say three weeks ago. The, the problem is that there's a difficulty uh, uh, between the general secretary and the chairman on one hand and the rest of the executives and the rank and file. Well, let me use this opportunity to greet all Ghanaians watching this program. So greet my constituency, the people of Dadekotupong, for the support they have been giving to me this far. Well, about this issue of MPP for the past three weeks that has been in the news. You see, when you have a challenge or a problem, solve the problem yourself or solve the problem but if a big wig like someone like Nana Komiya trying to cite certain things that happened in 1992 or 93 etc etc which he knows that what he says is not true some of us will also come out and say certain things because what happened in Kotiminti it was the MPP that killed them uh, the chairman, because when the chairman was going to die I heard him on television in 1992 that he said I want to have a man in this you know I want to have before the man died, when he was on his hospital bed, I heard him on television. Today, about almost, almost a decade, uh, uh, a decade and a half passed, now <coughs> he's twisting it. But okay, all the same, me, I will urge the police, because something is coming up in Ghana. You see, if you want to see how Ghana will be, look at what MPP is now, if you give the power to MPP. Yes. How do you go? Yes. Why well, you are a prophet now? If you give, you vote for MPP, the way Ghana will be is what you are seeing in their party now. That's not because the that party is a microcosm of what you do in future. What you do in future, how you manage your small party 
if you cannot manage your own small party <coughs> and you want to manage the country in this way, that is it. Ghana should see. One, we have Sinn Féin and NRA. They have the political wing and the militant wing. Now the FPP has formed a militant wing without us knowing behind our backs. That the police should take note because invisible forces, scorpion forces, all these people, why were they formed? We didn't know they were, you have invisible forces and scorpion forces. We didn't know until the <coughs> untimely death of, uh, untimely killing of uh, Alaji Adams in Bogatanga. Now we are seeing the invisible forces. Why were they formed? To do what? Now they are coming out against themselves. That's why I keep saying that if you are an elder in the house and you teach your children to insult other elders, after insulting all the other elders and they are finished, your children will turn up to you and they will insult you because there are no, no longer other elders that to be uh, uh, insulted. So this problem is an unfortunate thing. NDC is not taking advantage of it. But to me, the indiscipline that MPP has built for a very long time is what is <coughs> rearing its ugly head. Where mm -hmm. the indiscipline is what? Where the indiscipline is Where that indiscipline you is don't listen to what? elders. You take people to insult people in government. You take people to insult leadership. Now, if uh, an Kufuadu speak, nobody is listening. If President Kufuadu speak, nobody is listening. If the party chairman speak, nobody is listening. Why is it so? It's because of something that you have built. Something that you have built and you think it's to your advantage. But God is not deaf that he knows whatever that goes on. And today he's exposing the MPP. Mm. He's exposing the independent. Well, well, the thing is, and I've had this argument also from the leadership of the party, that it's, it's a very unfortunate situation that has uh, uh, befell the MPP. But you seem to be making all sorts of uh, insinuations because as, as, a poli as a political party, taking advantage of the current situation for your of, political benefit. Because the Nap making the Nap Nap is way. not a small person in MPP. No, not necessarily about Nap no, what he he's said. a leading member of MPP. Well, so not he's a communicator. He's a communicator. To come and say something that you know is not a truth. Well, you, you've made the point about that. Yes. But, uh, <coughs> but, but generally, you taking advantage of it as a party. Why should I take advantage? All right. On other networks, I've mm. spoken that this is a problem for Ghana. Mm. I'm not happy it's happening to them Frank, because we need you, a strong do you, opposition. Do you, and then, do you think that as a party, um, the, the leaders have taken too <coughs> long in resolving the difficulties that uh, the two have had with the rest of the party uh, executive? You see, uh, I think that we need to shift the goalposts and get this argument right. Mm. First of all, I, I, when I started, I've accepted that we have not conducted ourselves, corporate MPP, we've not conducted ourselves very well. Now, let's get a distinction very clear. There's a difference between a few miscreants in a party, a political party, misconducting themselves from a corporate decision of the party to go a certain lane. Yeah. That decision must be made. Therefore, if some youth who decide to take the law into their hands misconduct themselves, and we call the police to investigate. The party calls the police to investigate. That should be respected as a very civil approach and a mature decision taken by the party leadership. The party on record has not formed any militant group, Scorpion, whatever group my brother is describing it. There is no formal group as such existing. If there are some faceless individuals who call themselves all sorts of names, it is not sanctioned by a corporate entity called the New Patriotic Party. That distinction has to be drawn. In any case, uh, the flag bearer, when he, he landed, what did he say? He said that we should leave the matter to the, to the, 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 the rightfully mandated state institution to conduct an investigation. What were we expecting him to say? You see, uh, let's be very careful the way we lump this matter together and say that, uh, unfortunately, what my senior just said, that, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a show of what we can do when giving the mandate. No, you can't say that, if that is what you're saying. I can cite a number of violent exchanges that have gone on in constituencies across the country, where even known NDC activists, some places they were caught on camera, as we speak. So you're saying we, we shouldn't generalize You it, see, right? the point is that we should do that 
There are bad people in political parties, a mass group of people, and there are bad people in it. And not my take brother, advantage of it. My brother himself, he is constituency. There are bad people in the NDC. Mm. If such bad people right. hide behind he political doesn't agree with you, though. But, but, but okay, that's well, not what well, 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 now, what I'm saying is that so there are some angels that you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. There could be some Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, let the security force... They are always force. civil. That they go to poor NDC let are the civil. civil. Let the civil... Now, let without the, the incident the thing, involving never, NDC, NDC never, sympathizers... Never, I am saying never, that the, never security, the security agencies are doing their job. The party has not impeded them in any way. We have opened our doors. They are doing their job. That should tell you that we are law abiding. What would you expect people. your flag bearer, Nana Dodanko Kufadu, to say in his press conference today? Significantly, and I know Nana, I see, does as always. Significant. Nana is script? going to call. I have, <laughs> I have not read the script, no. <laughs> Nana, if he has a prepared script, he will make a lot of extempo speeches. You know, you know him. What he's going to do, which is going to form the bulk of his speech today, he's going to appeal for calm. And then he's also going to appeal to the party rank and file that let's all respect the laws and regulations laid down in our party. If indeed people want to get rid of um, the general secretary and then um, the chairman, the constitution is clear the way to go. So let's do that way. Let's, let's resort to, to that way to show maturity to the other world. The new patriotic party, trust us, I'm saying this on set today. Let people not rejoice for the challenge you are going through because we will definitely resolve this matter and then we'll come ever united than ever. So Nana, usual of him, is going to show leadership today. And I, I can assure you that those who are taking comfort and solace in this seeming disagreement and buhaha confronting our party, they should rewrite their notes because we will scale over it and will come united as ever before. What would you expect Nanado Danko Kufado to, 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 tell, to tell his rank and file, Definitely. to make sure that he brings, uh, uh, come to a, a very stormy water, so to speak? Definitely, M people will have to scale the what? You say scale what? Me? <laughs> yes, yes, I said, I said, I said we will scale the wall. OK, definitely the MPP have to scale the wall for Madagana, because we need you. You are not the only opposition party. There are other opposition parties. So even if NPP takes advantage of this thing, it's not going to be one party state. But I expect Nanado. I want Nanado to condemn Kosimintin killing in 1992, to condemn the killing of uh, Kofi Kuponi in Ashanti region, to condemn other political killings, and then <coughs> go ahead, apologize to Ghanaians about all that we die, and then tell people to come together as MPP to stop all this. But I know the MPP will not listen to him. You see? A lot of indiscipline in the NPP to the say that. But that's preemptive. I'm telling you. He's a flag bearer. Nanadu will speak today. He was tomorrow, voted, as, he was as, voted as, for over one million. As really? early as by, yesterday, by, by they were the still fighting. Of the party. As early as yesterday, they were still fighting. And I'm telling you that Nanadu will speak. They're not fighting. They're they attacks. Tax <laughs> who? What is it? It is fight. We were not fighting. You it had the, fight. what you had the police for God's sake. Tax. Tax. So all I'm saying is that I'm expecting Nanadu to speak. For MPP people to listen to, but I know they will not listen we to will. him. We will. Because I people is full of indiscipline. We will okay. listen to him. Uh, the, your, uh, former President John Ejeko yeah. um has uh, come out with a statement <clears throat> in the media calling for calm, etc. The concern that have been expressed over the last week is that even him, uh, his name has <coughs> been soiled uh, in a number of uh, 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 utterances that have, <coughs> that have come from uh, the mouth of some top top, yeah, yeah. top personalities yeah, within yeah. the party and, and 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 you can say for a respected man like that he would have been the ideal person to to be holding a press conference not even your flag bearer well first of all i think that let me condemn a statement that is is not purported i heard him say it oh, I, actually um, it's on yes i, I it's, condemn it's it on in social no media it's terms. on video really. i think that is most unfair um Whatever we are doing now, we are basing our trajectory yeah. on the bedrock laid down by the former president Kofo. So for anybody to draw this noble man into this buhaha is most unfortunate. And I want to make a passionate appeal to my big brother, my senior and colleague in, in, in a parliament, Honorable Kennedy in Japan, that some of these unfounded allegations rather muddies the waters. I'm just making an appeal. 
I hope he will listen in good faith. We should, we should learn to respect President Kufo for God's sake. Now, my, my big brother gets some goose pimples. You, you see, heard him in the comments he made. He said, oh, you are not going to listen to Nana Kufo for God's sake. Very preemptive as you were trying to correct him. But we are not, the, we are not like the NDC. Look, we are not like the NDC where a former president, Jerry John Rawlings, will come and then your general secretary will describe him as a backing dog. We are not like that. That's we will, oh, the listeners are listening and they know what the fact is. We will not describe our former president as a backing dog. The individual who made that unfortunate comment has been condemned widely. I am condemning it. It's on record, condemning it. Nanado, we will listen to him. As we were trying to correct you, he had over 90% support. So there, there are some few people who, who are misconducting themselves. We are saying that they are, they are eventually going to be, to be corrected and they will come on board. I am telling you that we are putting our acts together and all will be well with that soonest. This press conference will come off and you will see the leadership that Nana Kufado is going to show. But just a point, don't forget, not too long ago, because I wouldn't have said this, but the passion with which my big brother is saying all this thing is motivating me to make all these comments. When you have the NDC food soldiers seizing and confiscating state assets like KVIPs and the likes, <laughs> then the security forces were quiet. <laughs> then the NDC were full of angels. <laughs> they were confiscating toilet facilities in the eastern region. The Adomi Bridge was taking siege by NDC foot soldiers. That one was normal. It was civil. Okay? You were even in power. You had all the security apparatus at your disposal to bring normal and calm. You were not able to do it. We have on record in this country where party foot soldiers have given a warning to a sitting president, a sitting vice president, not to go to some places. You see, I don't want to go that lane. I am saying that we have a challenge, and we are not pretending about it. And but I'm telling you that we are going to resolve it, and we are going to take the reins of government. Kufa, what and what would you expect him to say? Back on. For no, example, I, you have asked me that question. I, I thought we were going to honourable uh, Kufu. Uh, His Excellency uh, President Kufu. Mm, mm. You know, yes, the MPP has a challenge. I know they will surmount it, but they should surmount it well. <laughs> President Kufu is somebody that I respect so much. He is one of the leading statesmen in Ghana. He goes to outside Ghana to portray Ghana as a very good country. And we are all happy and proud of him. But will the MPP listen to him? Will the MPP listen to him? That is one thing. The way they have insulted President Kufour in the media left and right. In fact, my heart bleeds. Because me and this person, I will never insult my former president. I said in Kedem never insulted President Rowling. I said in Kedem was saying that the autocracy that was in the NDC, that was destroying NDC, mm -hmm. is no longer there. That is the backing dog. <clears throat> so anybody backing now can come into the party. Mm -hmm. He was asked and he explained that he never meant President uh, uh, Rawlings, but he meant the autocracy, the undem undemocratic tenants that were in NDC are no longer there. So now M NDC is democratic. Anybody can come in. Mm -hmm. So once the person who said, made a statement has explained it, why should the MPP take it and then <laughs> twist it? But all what I'm saying is that MPP, the earlier they resolve their problem, the better for Ghana. Will. As a Ghanaian, I want MPP to overcome their problem. But if they do not overcome their problem, it is their own JJJ. There are other political <laughs> parties. PPP is there, CPP is there, PNP is there, uh, P, uh, P and PNC. PNC is there. PPP they can come there. out as big uh, political party, opposition party, and then replace the MPP. <clears> but I strongly believe that they should be disciplined and listen to their leadership. Now, I will go to speak today, listen to him, but I know you will not listen to him. We will. President Kufo has issued statement, listen to him, I know you will not listen we to him. Will. Because you don't even respect him. You are trying to make President Kufo a simpapenin, which is very sad. My heart bleeds. The way MPP is going about things. If a legislator will stay this thing against a sitting former president, so bad. I bow my head in shame. We don't want Sinn Féin, uh, 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 NRA in Ghana. We want political parties like Labour Party, uh, and then uh, <coughs> leave them and then uh, conservative where there is no militant wing 
You want you want a very peaceful want the democratic Republicans Ghana. and then the the Republicans and the Democrats. <laughs> we don't want any militant wing of any uh, capacity. Uh, well, well, your point has been made. We, now, we, now, we don't have now, we don't have a backing yes, dog. Yes, okay. we don't have a backing dog. Okay, now, and now, we respect the, the backing dog was the autocracy. We love that was enough of the reaction. Now we have to move on to another subject. But you know, there's something that happened. I don't know whether it was due process. And now more of your chairman put together, I think all of your original chairmen put yeah. together meetings. And those meetings, um, the conclusions were that they wanted the, the general secretary and the chairman to was it step aside, or to be suspended, or whatever it is. Uh, how do you situate the legality <coughs> of what they did within the context of law? Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a student of law. I'm not an authority in this area. Sure. But I've looked at the constitution of our party. I think that um, they have the right. They do? They do have the right. To do what they did? Yes, they have the right. In terms of, in proper context. Which article is it? In your well, I can't, I mean, I can't quote the exact act. But they have the right to, to, to come up with a resolution. For what I, what they did was a resolution in my Well, I get your point. Opinion. Okay, for example, now, in Article 10 of your constitution, it says, whenever 40% of the delegates <coughs> that elect constituency regional, and now even we're talking about the national chairman, uh, which receives uh, such, uh, they, they have received a notice, okay? And, and that should be within, uh, one, one, within one week, okay? Uh, they, they, they shall circulate this to all delegates. Now, if you go to 1B, it says the petition for the removal of an officer shall be on stated grounds, mm -hmm. a copy of which shall be given to the affected officer who shall be given the opportunity to be heard by a body constituted by the executive committee. Now, within one month of the circulation of such notice referred to in one, the said executive shall summon an extraordinary delegate's conference, that executive committee, to deliberate and decide the matter. Now, all these processes have not been exhausted. You see, the point is that, um, mm -hmm. for me, I'm not interested, seriously, I'm not interested in uh, the legalities and the processes that are involved in this. What I'm interested in is that the bottom line is that at the end of the day, peace reigns is our party. At the end of the day, we have, we have the rank and party, the rank and file of our party motivated to come and give for their best. Now, what I can tell you is that there are serious efforts underway to resolve this matter once and for all. So this matter may have got into the media of a number of people trying to come up with a resolution. But again, I take solace in the fact that a certain leadership from the former president, his former president Kufo's office, the flag bearer himself, they are all putting our heads together to bring this matter to a close. For me, that is most significant. Whether it meets the legal requirements and the processes involved have all been exhausted or not, that is not significant. It is not? Yeah. It is not significant well, they in go context well, now. Well, they go about and also uh, communicating this to the media that they would want their two, the chairman and the general secretary, to, to, top, to, top executives of the party to be off and not, go, and not going according to procedure. You see, this matter has been overbitten. Okay. I'm telling you that. Then let's not talk about it. We have scaled it. it. We government 